Good morning. Welcome to Community United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rebecca Cho, and I greet all of you joining us in the sanctuary as well as anyone joining us today online. Today we will continue to think about the, the topic of faith and how we can renew our thinking. So today let us allow God to refresh and transform us. And Ellen, and I'm sorry, I forgot about the, <laughs> let us listen to the choral intro before Alex opens us in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, call us together as your people. Transform us with your love. Transform our hearts that we may love generously. Transform our eyes that we may see your grace. Transform our hands that we may serve others. Transform our spirits that we may be the body of Christ, gathered to worship and sent out to serve. Amen. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. You have called us to this place, O oh Lord. Each one of us is unique with differing gifts and talents. Yet each talent represented here is valuable in God's realm. Come, let us praise the Lord who has called us here. Let us open our hearts and spirits to God's word for us. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in singing hymn number 419 in verses 1 and 4 in the United Methodist hymnal. I am thine, O Lord. Please be seated. Our prayer of confession. Caring God, you call us to be the body of Christ, to live in community, to care for one another, to use our different gifts. 
Forgive our neglect of others. Give us obedient spirits that we may care for one another, depend on your love, and use our gifts for your gospel. Amen. Let's take a moment for silent reflection. Hear these words of assurance. The Lord is on our side, offering words of forgiveness, protecting us from danger. We are a foreign people bound together in God's love. We are the body of Christ, forgiven and free. Amen. Won't you sing um, Jesus Loves Me? I think that's the song. While the children come forward. Hey, good morning. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Thanks for coming up. So, um, so I'm um, wearing a choir robe this morning. Um, our mom dresses us alike. And uh, underneath it, just a, an Oxford shirt. But next week, I have to tell you, I am probably going to be wearing a T-shirt and jeans um, to church. Anybody want to know why? Anybody want to guess why? Yeah, yeah. Why? I don't know why. Okay. Alex? Sorry? It is going to be warm next week. Yes, that's, that is absolutely true. That's not the reason, though. Sorry? Yeah? Very cool. Yeah. No, that's not the reason. No, so it's because next week is actually... I don't have any clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Um, that's not it. Um, it's because next week is the walk for hunger and also the walk to end homelessness. Um, I'm just wondering if you folks are familiar with either of those. Mm, well, then I will tell you. Um, so they are both the same weekend. And um, I think the walk to end homelessness has a little bit better name. It's a walk to end homelessness, the walk for hunger. Um, Maybe a little bit of a misnomer, or we're not for hunger. We're actually we're looking to walk to uh, reduce the number of hungry people. Um, an interesting story. Maybe Alex will appreciate this more than some. Um, the Walk for Hunger traditionally has been in Boston. Starts and ends in Boston. It's about a twenty. It was originally about a twenty-mile walk through Boston, Brookline, Newton, Watertown, Cambridge, and back to Boston. Yeah, twenty miles, and. Um, and so if you can imagine 30 or 40,000 people walking in sort of a big clockwise loop around these towns on the same route, everybody walking together, um, and at about the halfway point, we would typically meet a group of about 10 or 15 people, and they would be wearing T-shirts that said, walk against hunger, and they were walking in the other direction. Because they thought the name Walk for Hunger seemed like a bad name. And so they got t-shirts that said Walk Against Hunger to signify that they were actually against hunger. And they would walk counterclockwise the same 20 miles. We'd meet them about the midway point and say hi and give them a high five. Well, anyway, this is coming up. Yeah, this is coming up next week. Um, and uh, maybe, Pastor, if you'd switch to the next picture. So here's a picture of the Walk for Hunger. This is actually a bunch of years ago when it was in Boston. And depending upon, um, I guess, your vision, you can maybe see some folks there. You, I want you to understand that we've been doing this for a long time. I think uh, Mr. McLeod's there, Mr. Schubert. Uh, let's see, Atlas and Adam are there. Adam looks exactly the same as today, I think. <laughs> Nobody would ever know. So we've been doing that for a long time, and, uh, and it's coming up again. So I just want to mention that to you folks 
in case it's something that you and your families might be interested in. It's not a 20 mile walk anymore, not a 20 mile walk. Um, and the two walks together uh, start and end at Natick High School. And so it's a very reasonable walk in case you wanna think about that. Um, yeah, so actually maybe next slide, Pastor, if you wouldn't mind. This is uh, also from a bunch of years ago. This is from 2010 when it was a 20 mile walk and this is Ethan at age nine uh, doing the walk uh, for the second time. So don't think it's something only uh, older folks can do. It's a family sort of thing. But I want to ask you a question. I've mentioned that we're doing these walks to, uh, you know, to end homelessness or against hunger, against hunger, not for hunger. Um, but I want to, I'm not trying to be funny. I want to ask a question. What does a bunch of people walking around do to reduce hunger or end homelessness? Yes, please. Oh, say more about this. Um, when people sponsor you, they give you money so you can keep going on your walk. And then at the end, you take all the collected money and then donate it to wherever you're donating it, donating it to at charity or something like that. I'm done. <laughs> that is exactly right. So if it is something that you and your families would be interested in, you can register online. We actually have a church team webpage for the Walk for Hunger. Um, and you can also register online for the Walk to End Homelessness. Maybe pick one or the other. Uh, it is absolutely a family activity. It is absolutely a lot of fun. It's generally nice weather. Uh, so hopefully I'll have some clothes to put on, including a t-shirt. And so uh, let's have a quick prayer together. Dear Father, we thank you that we can be your hands and feet on earth, that we can do things to help people, and that next week that our activities and our fundraising can help reduce hunger among our neighbors and reduce homelessness in our neighborhoods. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture lesson for today comes to us from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, on the basis of God's mercy, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the encourager in encouragement, the giver in sincerity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able for the glory of Patrick.
In today's reading from Romans, Paul says, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This tells us that our minds can be used to test, to approve, to discern God's will. And it also tells us that our minds can be changed. They can be renewed, opened, inspired, transformed. If someone had asked me to make a list of practices of faith, I'm not sure that thinking would have made the list for me. Not because I don't agree, but I just don't think I would have thought about it. But today, um, we will be continuing, I'll be continuing a four-part sermon series based on the book, Faith for Essential Practices, by, written by Reverend Olu Brown, retired United Methodist pastor who now uh, currently coaches other pastors. And in his book, he lists four of the essential practices of faith. And he lists, lists waiting, praying, thinking, and acting. So today, I will talk about thinking. So even though I said that um, if I were thinking of a list of, of practices of faith that thinking might not have made my list, I do recognize that thinking is an important part of our Methodist tradition. The founder of Methodism, 18th century Anglican priest John Wesley, believed that the Bible was at the center of faith, but he believed that the Bible did not stand on its own, but is read and interpreted in light of reason, tradition, and experience. These four components have been called the Wesleyan quadrilateral, scripture, reason, tradition, and experience. It's good for us to recognize that our minds and our ways of thinking are essential parts of who we are and affect every part of our lives, including our faith. In Olu Brown's book, he talks about how easy it is for us to be impacted by negative thoughts. And I felt like I could relate to some of what he said about that, about being affected by negative thoughts. Listen to what he said on page 58. The challenge is that some of the thoughts we think during the day are not positive, and negative thoughts may be extremely detrimental to our overall outlook on life. One of the realities is that we tend to hyper-focus on negative thoughts. These negative thoughts seem to have free rent in our minds. Can anyone else relate to that idea? Okay. So it appears to be a pretty common experience among humans that we might hear someone tell us 10 positive things about ourselves. Let's say you're in a, uh, a job review or something like that, a performance review, and you might hear 10 positive things said about you, and then maybe one or two negative things. What do you think your mind is going to focus on with a kind of laser focus? <laughs> it tends to be those negative things, doesn't it? Um, at least I could relate to this, that those are the things that I might dwell on that might just stick in my head for a long time. The good news is that we can change and transform and renew our minds. The bad news is, it's really hard work. So let me go over three suggestions that Olu had in his book about thinking. They are to think differently, to think boldly, and to think outside the box. So when Olu says to think differently, it sounds like he means a couple of different things by that. The first thing about think differently is kind of acknowledging and accepting that each of us already thinks differently. We think in our own ways, and that can be a good thing for us to embrace and accept. And another thing that he seems to mean by it is that, if, that we can change our thinking. So if we're thinking in certain ways right now that don't serve us well, 
we have the ability to think in a new way, to think differently. So looking at the first point, the idea that each of us already has our own different way of thinking, uh, we can look to our passage from Romans that we heard today. So Paul said to the people, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think too highly of yourself, not to think more highly than you ought, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. And then he goes on to talk about how each person has their own gifts, gifts such as prophecy, ministry, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, and showing compassion. I think that it's good for us to try to strike a balance between accepting ourselves as we are, as God's beloved children, each with our own special gifts and talents, and at the same time, to always desire something better for ourselves. So in Methodist terms, we talk about going on to perfection. And you have to be a little bit careful about that term. If you're, if you're used to it, you, you understand that it, it means that we know that we can always uh, strive for something better. We may not reach perfection, but we always have that goal. And even if we don't reach perfection, we can be blessed in our striving. So the fact that thinking differently by changing our way of thinking is difficult is probably obvious. You probably uh, realize that maybe from your own life that it can be hard to change the ways we think and the ways we behave. In his book, The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business, Charles Duhigg talks about the importance of habits. Without making a concerted effort, we generally follow whatever patterns we have established. And this goes for both the ways we act and the ways we think. Duhigg says, left to its own devices, the brain will make almost any routine into a habit because habits allow our brains to ramp down more often. So the brain likes to be efficient and spare itself extra exertion so when possible, it goes on autopilot. Uh, an example of that, of thinking about the, uh, the idea of autopilot is maybe you've had the experience when uh, if you're driving in a familiar place, going to a familiar location, um, sometimes you kind of don't even remember how you got there because you just, the car seems like it's on autopilot. You just go there. Whereas if you're in a new place that you haven't been before, you're on alert and you're looking at the street signs and paying, paying attention. I know I've had the experience of uh, planning on going somewhere, maybe going to the grocery store or something, and I'm driving in the direction of my kid, one of my kids' schools, and I just automatically make the turn to go to the school because um, I'm just so used to, to going there that I have to concentrate if I'm going somewhere else. I have to actually think about it. Duhigg says, habits aren't destiny. Habits can be ignored, changed, or replaced. But unless you deliberately fight a habit, unless you find new routines, the pattern will unfold automatically. Next, Olu Brown talks about thinking boldly. In the book, he reminds the readers of people in the Bible, like Sarah and Abraham, who boldly lived out their faith. In that example, Abraham and Sarah had to do something very bold indeed. They had to uproot their whole lives and move to a new, unknown place. It was their bold, bold faith that allowed them to trust God and to make that move. He also gave another example of people like John Lewis, who boldly worked for civil rights, even incurring bodily harm and much harassment as he stood up for his beliefs. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, the author says, 
For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. We are called not to be timid in either our thinking or our actions, but to be bold by the power of God's spirit. After encouraging us to think differently and boldly, Olu calls us to think outside the box. As I read that chapter, I saw it as more of a combination of the first two. We all certainly have kind of boxes that we live inside of and that we think inside of, and those can, uh, can be the habits that constrain our lives. Thinking differently, thinking boldly, and thinking outside the box can help us to improve our lives. To our, our God-given minds, with their ability to think and reason, deserve to be well taken care of, to be renewed and transformed, so that our thought patterns will be more positive for our lives. Olu says, when we realize that God's favor includes the renewing of our minds, we are reminded of our patterns of thinking and shown the ways those patterns need to be disrupted and renewed. This renewal will allow us to think on new levels that are deeper and higher, and I would add, and that bring us closer to God. In a study of people struggling with alcohol addiction, researchers found that a belief in God, or at least a belief that things could change, really made a difference. Charles Duhigg says, once people learned how to believe in something, that skill started spilling out into other areas of their lives until they started believing that they could change. Having the capacity to believe that things could get better was really important in order for people to change. We might simply call this hope, a keystone of our Christian faith. Let us search our minds and thinking patterns and see what is worth keeping. What is it that we want to preserve in the ways that we are already thinking? What are the things that we know aren't good, that need to be removed or renewed? Let us weed out and discard those negative thoughts and behaviors that lead us away from God's way of love. And let us instead seek to water and cultivate those good and positive seeds that lead us closer to God. Let us set our minds on things that are above and things of the spirit. For as Paul said to the Romans, to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. May God bless all of us with minds that are turned to the things of the spirit so that all of us may have life and peace. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in singing Help Us Accept Each Other, number 560 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Please stand as you're able.
be seated. It is time for us now to share our joys, our concerns, and to witness how we have seen God acting in our lives. I Good morning. Um, a while back, I had asked for prayers for the woman I live with or work with. Her, her significant other was having kidney transplant. The procedure was last week. It was successful, thank God. Um, but now comes the long road of fighting rejection and all new medications. So if we could continue to pray for John, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to hear that all went well with that. So continued prayers for, for his full healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good morning. Uh, as many of you know, Nathaniel had his sleep study this past week. Um, he has moderately obstructive sleep apnea. So A, I never suggest doing a sleep study with a baby. It's terrible. They put like 50 wires on you and go, hey, now go to sleep. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, as a result, we need to see an ENT because he has enlarged tonsils and we can't get in until November for that, uh, which is directly against what his specialist said about, we'd like you to see an ENT sooner rather than later. Um, so uh, we put our name on the wait list for cancellations, which means we're not the only ones. Uh, so uh, just some prayers that that could happen sooner rather than later would be great. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. So I would like to lift up uh, prayers for our denomination, for the United Methodist Church. We are in the, the middle right now of the general conference. So this is um, the, the group of people that meets every normally every four years. They're uh, having the 2020 delayed conference right now. Um, this is the body that makes decisions for the entire United Methodist Church. So it's a, important happenings for, for our denomination. So they're halfway through, they have one more week. And I'll just share with you a few updates. Um, there are like many more updates and, um, and there will be more happening in the coming weeks. So I'll give further updates next week. So one thing that happened was that uh, regionalization, um, there's a, a constitutional amendment allowing regionalization passed by a by 78 percent and it needed a two-thirds vote by the general conference so what this basically means is um, in our system as it as it currently is um, the united methodist the united states uh, is treated a little bit differently than um, conferences outside of the united states and that's because it, the denomination really started in the U.S. and it's been a kind of U.S. centric denomination. So previously, um, people who were part of the central conferences, which is all of the conferences outside of the U.S., were able to make some amendments to the Book of Discipline to adapt to their own cultural settings. But the United States um, was not able to do that. Um, and so people from all of the conferences were able to vote on things in the Book of Discipline that might really relate to the US and might not relate to um, other countries outside the US. So anyway, so this is something that has been in the works for a long time. So this passed, which means that now the US will be its own regional conference and be able to make some of its own um, decisions and determinations about the Book of Discipline. Uh, so that was, that was quite a big change. Another thing that happened is there were four Eurasian conferences that in the general conference uh, le decided to leave the denomination, leave the United Methodist Church, and that, and that uh, was approved by the body. So that those four annual conferences encompass churches in Russia, Belarus, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. 
and they are planning on forming their own denomination. So as you might know, uh, churches throughout the world, and especially in the U.S., a lot have disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church. About 25% of churches in the United Methodist Church left the denomination, mostly to, to uh, join more conservative um, denominations like the Global Methodist Church. Um, so this didn't represent a large number of churches, these, these four um, conferences. The total number of, of members represented about 1,000 people and, and uh, 66 churches. So it's not a lot of people um, that are represented, but it's a region, you know, a whole region of, um, so it, it's a, a sad loss, you know, to see, uh, to see those churches leave. And um, a third thing that I'll mention is they are working on updating the social principles of the United Methodist Church, which is a part of the Book of Discipline that talks about um, various beliefs that overall we hold to as United Methodists. And there's a lot of variety in those social principles and a lot of different ideas incorporated. Um, one change that has already been approved, I'll tell you about, but there are more, um, a lot more discussions about the social principles that are gonna be happening this week. So the one change that, one of the changes that was made is that the United Methodist Church now proclaims its support for the equal rights, liberties, and protections of all people regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. So the big change there is the gender identity being added. There was already language about that all people are of sacred worth, including, you know, all different categories of people, but this, this was one um, quite major change, and I, I didn't write down here what the percentage was, but it was passed, the, that wasn't the only change, but all those changes were passed by a very high margin. Um, so there will be uh, more votes, especially on teachings related to creation care, human sexuality, and marriage will be coming before the general conference in this coming week. So I just wanted to give you an update on just a few of the things happening. Uh, you can find news, um, you can look up UM News to see more about the general conference, and it's, it's uh, live streamed. Most of it is live, live streamed. If you, if you feel like watching a little bit just to see what it's like. I, um, where is this In North Carolina. Oh. Mm. The just another note, like the general conferences have always taken place in the United States because it is like a very US centric, you know, um, denomination. And that is going to change. They're gonna have like the first general conference, I can't remember which year, but they're gonna start having them like outside of the US. Because imagine all the people from around the world, they have the huge expense of traveling to the US. Um, so that, that is my update. Now, are there any other joys, concerns, or, or witness this time? All right. If not, then let us be in prayer. Our loving God, we thank you for the countless blessings that you give to us. We thank you for the blessing of gathering together here today Lord, we know that you have heard the joys and the concerns that have been lifted up today. We know that your healing is, is needed among many people, and we especially lift up John uh, after his kidney transplant, and we lift up Nathaniel and that he will be able to get all of the care that he needs at this time. And Lord, we pray for all of the other people here and uh, those who are our loved ones who are also in need of your healing touch. You know all of their needs and concerns before we speak them. We lift up to you prayers for peace in our world. There are many places where we see war and violence, especially right now in Gaza and we are so concerned about the people there and, uh, and so upset when, when we see and hear about all of the violence. And so we pray for peace there and in, in many other places in the world. 
where your peace is needed and help us in whatever ways we can to be your agents of peace in this world. We pray also for our denomination, the United Methodist Church. We pray that, that throughout these gatherings happening in North Carolina, that, uh, that your presence would be, would be felt, that your Holy Spirit would descend upon the people and in that place and, and help the conversations to happen in love and let, let the delegates uh, be open to the moving of your spirit. We pray all of these things as well as all of the silent petitions of our hearts. Bless us, Lord, and renew and transform us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is a time in our service in which we um, thank God for our tithes and offering. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking about um, in the last 24 hours what was going on um, that I was a part of. And um, on Saturday morning, uh, the United Methodist uh, Women in Faith had a presentation on climate justice. and. It was just so moving uh, to be aware of um, the things that we're doing to our environment. Uh, the speaker donated her time. Other people donated refreshments. But what you all donated was an open building that had lights and, and heat. And then I think about last night, um, and I think about talents. We entertained eh, around 15 children here. Um, you didn't know you were entertaining them, but some of us did know. And um, people's talents were just abundant, whether it was making crafts with these children, whether it was playing outside with bubbles, whether it was uh, making popcorn and making dinner, just all sorts of wonderful things went on in our church because the lights were on, the heat was on, and we were open. And think what a message that gives to the people in our community, that we're, we're a doing church. We're not just sitting back. So if you so desire to give your offering or your tithing, there are collection plates at the back and at the side, and you can mail it into um, the church main office. Uh, won't you stand for our doxology? Generous God, you have given us many gifts and drawn us together into Christ's body, the church. You have blessed us with generous and cheerful spirits. May the gifts of your money, time, and talents support the ministry of our church. Amen. Please be seated. We have some announcements to share. Uh, the Faith Exploring class will have its second gathering today after church from about 11.30 to 12.30, and it'll be, it will be held in the library. We're going to talk a little bit about John Wesley and some history of Methodism, and all are welcome to attend. 
Also today after the service, um, Deb is going to lead uh, assembling of hygiene kits in the fellowship hall. The lay leadership committee will be meeting today at 3 p.m. We'll meet in the parlor. The investment team has a meeting Monday, April 29th at 7 p.m. Uh, 7.30 p.m. Community growth team has a meeting on Wednesday, May 1st at 7 p.m. And then the following Monday, trustees have a meeting Monday, May 6th at 7. I think those are all of my announcements, Allison. So Andy gave a good introduction to the Walk for Hunger and the Walk to End Homelessness, but I want to tell you about the logistics of it. Um, it's, we're going to leave right after church uh, next week um, to go to the Walk to End Homelessness and use their trek for both walks. It is like a 3 to 3.5 mile walk. It's not a bad walk at all. Um, you can register uh, for the Walk for Hunger on the Project Bread website. Our team name is Community United Methodists. Um, for the Walk to End Homelessness, you can register for that on the Family Promise website. There, isn't, there was no way to form a team there, so you have to register as an individual. Um, and I'll be downstairs if you have questions. I can show you where the websites are on my iPad and, and the like. You can't walk, don't want to walk, going to do something else next Sunday, no worries. Just help support us. Um, you can do that by going to either one of those websites and looking for, um, you know, the United Methodist team on Project Bread, or you can use either Andy's or mine on the Walk to End Homelessness. And I'm sure if you have a cash donation, we can figure out a way of uh, managing that. Yes, I will put it. You can either write a check for Project Bread or for Family Promise. And I'll put that in an envelope and send it off. Or you can hand me money, and then I can write a check yeah. and send it off. Great. Thank you. Hi. And we're also signing up for Mother's Day blankets today. So if you want to get your sheets in today, or you can take them and turn them in next week. And the final date for that, I think, is the Wednesday the 10th. I think it is. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing any others, then let us join together in singing Change My Heart, O God. This is in the small black hymnal, the faith we sing, number 2152. And uh, I think we'll sing it through two times. Yeah, we'll sing it through two times. So please stand if you are able. And now let us go forth from this place, allowing God's spirit 
to renew, transform, and change us. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.